hey 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 it's a brand new day on Gillen Farms and I'm Johnny and uh, what I've got going on today is I'm going out to check on the situation where the cattle are now as I've mentioned before in some of my videos you guys know that these videos it, it's not like whenever I put the video out that it's like that day or this video will probably be out oh a week out i'll give you an example it is i believe the 21st of june right now summer solstice so 21st of june so you can you can check by when it comes out how long it takes to get a video out because i've got a lot of content between now and then um hot but tolerable today. Um, there was a, apparently there was a storm out west and we got a cool, if you can get a cool, we got a cooler breeze from that. It's uh, 85 degree right now. Feels like 90, I think I, it said uh, whenever I looked a while ago. But exciting stuff. Uh, we, we went to Red Power Roundup. This is actually the first video that I've actually recorded since we went to Red Power Roundup. We, uh, there's a couple of videos, two or three videos that's gonna come out, and then all of a sudden this one's gonna come out. Um, saying that we just came back from Red Power Roundup. We did. Last Saturday, we drove back. We, we drove in there, I think we got there middle of the day on Friday of Red Power Roundup in Grand Island, uh, Nebraska, and we drove back on Saturday straight, straight through, eight hours on the way back. So we got to meet Pete from just a few acres farm. We met, and uh, that was a that was a fantastic time. That was that was about at least 50% of the reason why we even went. And the rest of it is just those amazing tractors and things that we saw. We saw, let's just put it this way. We wanted to go to the tractor show, but Pete being there kind of put it over the edge as far as uh, of actually going to the uh, going to the show he uh he kind of made it to where we're like well we wanted to go but if pete's going we're really wanting to go and since we've been back we've been scouring marketplace for a good farm oil tractor looking for something in that i'd like to have something in that 756 range but um need something around 75 75 horsepower or so so it's going to have to be a diesel it's going to have to be a little bit larger tractor but anyway as i said i'm going out here uh, going to check on the grass situation where the cows are i do have all the stuff to spray the cattle for flies i'm going to look and see how many flies are on these cows and if they're having a bad time of it i've got all the stuff that i need with me in order to uh, take care of that so, and we don't have any rain in the forecast to wash it off. And unless they get in the pond and start, uh, you know, they, they do like to get in the pond and try to relieve themselves from the heat. When they get in the pond, that's when they wash it all off. Uh, that and whenever they dust, they get down in the dirt and water around and stuff like that. So anyway, We'll see what I do whenever I get there. So stay tuned, folks. All right, everybody. I have made it out here where the cattle are. So let's go down here and see how they're doing with the grass that they've got in this property here. Uh -huh, I see them already. Some of the younger ones. All right, I see them all throughout here. 
So it looks like there's still a few buttercups coming up, but I call them chigger weeds though. like they're all here. There's Danny. I kind of gauge everything by whether or not Danny's here. There's Danny here, that's that's a pretty good gauge. I don't know if something is in. Looks like the cat the fly situation isn't horrible on these cows right now. Look around the face of that one right there, that, that white faced cow. If the fly situation is horrible, that I mean, you can really see it in their fly and their eyes and nose. So it looks like they're doing okay on the flies. I'm not going to have to really do anything today, and even though I have everything to do. Do that. Oh, Danny, he's a big old boy. All right, get this little cow out of the way here. Kind of go out here and check on these other paddocks. See if I need to, if I can move or should move or do any of that stuff. Let's do that official count. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. <laughs> it's always like this. Let's do this again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All here. All here. 20. You are looking good, girl. Looking good. This one here's got a pretty good fly load on her. This is what I mean by flies around the around the face. And a lot of time it just depends upon where they actually are. So maybe right up around these trees there's a lot more flies. They go out there and there's less. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to check these check these other fields out and see if we can do a move on these cattle. So let's check that. All right, I'm down here doing an assessment of the grass. And as you remember me telling you about the places where they urinate and they kill all the grass, here's one. Um, there's not a ton of grass. This is the this is the second. This is the transition paddock that I'm in. And this is that area where I did all the brush hogging where you saw the aerial of uh, me brush hogging. This, this is it. This is where I brush hogged all these briars down again to give, these, uh, to give this grass a chance to grow. If it's trying to compete with briars, it doesn't do too well. Plus it knocks these briars down to a point to where the cattle will, will eat, actually eat the top of that now because it's tender, young growth. So you can, you can knock it back. You can knock those briars back and then put the cattle back on it and the cattle will actually help you with the briars at that point. You, you have to realize how many briars were on this whenever I turn the cattle in here. We, we've had the cattle on this property since, I believe it was August 1st last year. And they, there was nothing on this property before that for many, many, many years. And since there was nothing on it for many, many, many years, the uh, briars all just went wild. I mean, this whole area right here was just well, I'll give you an example. You see all of that right there? Well, all of this looked just like that, every bit of it. 
everything across that fence over there looked just like that. Everything up the, on the side of that hill looked just like that. Um, you go down here, I mean, I, I really hope people go back and look at the, the pasture creation videos that I did because if you, if you do, you will see how much different this is than it was before. Everything up through there, past these brush piles and things like that, that was just solid briars and uh, trees and cedars, cedar. So every bit of that was just solid. Just you couldn't do anything with it. I mean, it wouldn't support any cattle whatsoever. So, and that's this area right here. Everything all the way around through there. That whole hillside over there was briars back over that way. On the other side of the pond and the pond bank, you couldn't even, you couldn't even get to, you couldn't walk through there. And uh, so I've made it now to where you can brush hog it and you can kind of keep it cleaned up I've got a few uh, trees out there I've got to burn. Uh, got a couple of logs out there to cut out over in that area. I believe there's one right here I need to cut out. I need to burn these piles, but you know, we're, we're heading shoulders above where we were before. And this fence is the fence I put in running the exact same way my dad had it run back whenever he was alive. And like I said, when he was alive, this pasture back here, it was actually split one more time. There was a fence that went, let me go over here and show you this. And it went directly that way. So that fence went right down there and it stopped about the middle of the pond. And then he had a fence that went across the pond, straight through the middle of the pond and came up on the middle of that old, uh, past that old dead tree over there. And if you look past that old dead tree, you can see a little line of brush and that's actually the old fence row right there that went up. So the way he had it is he had his mule pasture here and then he had where the horses and stuff could get back in here in this area. And then they could both water. So the mules could water out of this end of the pond and the horses water out of the other end of the pond down there. And that pond is way down right now. And that's because it's got a leaky dam and we haven't had rain in a while. Our last rain was one half inch of rain back. Uh, let's see, we got it. I guess last Saturday Saturday night I think when we came in we got one half inch of rain it is Thursday right now so we had a half inch of rain almost a week ago at this point so but the grass is still green so I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to turn them in this paddock right here and let them eat some of the good out of here and let that front paddock or the mingirls paddock kind of re revigorate a little bit, I guess you'd call it. And that one back over there, we're going to let it we're going to let it revigorate for a while too. I think this little pond over here is going to be good enough to keep them watered for Probably till it's Thursday, probably till Sunday. So I'll put them in here. Probably, probably come out maybe, maybe Sunday, maybe Monday and move them again. So anyway, let me take care of that. Oh yeah, before I forget, I thought I would show you our rain gauge. All that's in there is dust. So it's been a little bit. Like I said, we had a little half inch rain Saturday, 
and nothing since. And with these temperatures, it won't take long for this to start looking like a desert. So anyway, let me move these cattle. transition paddock and they'll be here for just a few days I had I had a viewer ask about my mic system on on my uh, camera they they saw the system on the camera and then they saw uh, this thing that I wear on my hat so what this is it's a Rode wireless go to and that's for AK bill uh, for asking that question about the mic and it's it's a very good system it's comparable to uh, I believe it's comparable to the G DJI stuff actually whenever I talked to Pete from just a few acres farm he commented about it and uh, he said he's got that same mic and he said that he just he said it's a really good mic so uh, just a get that little bit of tidbit out there and what I'm filming with is a GoPro 11 and it's got that uh, mic on it that Rode mic so anyway the girls are out here and they're they're enjoying their, their 
stuff to eat. This cow right here a while ago, I was looking at her jaw. I thought she might have a lump on the side, but I'm not seeing that. So it was cud. She had, she was chewing her cud. So anyway, and over there where all those are, that's where all the briars were. So they're in there in the, in the fresh grass that was in the briars. That's stuff that they couldn't access that well before. So they're accessing the, uh, the fresh grass that they find in there. Since I, since I mowed all that out, they're, they're able to actually get down to it. So one good thing about it, without, any, without, tall, without tall stuff in this field, these uh, cattle will, you know, they shouldn't be susceptible to pink eye very, very easily over here. They all look great. They're all in great shape. So anyway, if you like this type of video, um, like and subscribe. And I'll continue to bring more content in the future as available. And as always, everybody, God bless and thank you for watching.